Welcome back for part two of how to underpaint with water soluble oil pastels. I'm going to move this stuff around now so we can work on it some more. You might have noticed that in the tree drawing video, I was using a trick from the colorist method of painting. Doing the shadows in a cool color on all the foliage clumps and then the highlights in a warm color. So let's use that color arrangement because it worked so well before and get some nice shadows worked in here on the tree. We've decided the lights coming in from the right and the shadows come around the left. So when we go to shading the distant tree, it'll be the same thing. I've got a very small selection of pastels here, so I'm not going to be able to vary what particular light and dark colors I'm using so much for this. But again, I'm kind of going around the sky holes we put in last time. I think this is looking good. Most of the dark is on the left and down. The highlights are on the right and the up, and ah, oh, there's an area that should be shadowed. There we go. Alrighty. We don't have too many regular patterns going on here either. That's good. Now this, this could be the top of another tree that's nearby that you're just kind of seeing it. Is it a bush or is it a tree? Either way, it's going to get some highlights and it's going to be in something like those greens. So let's make the corner dark. Notice I'm not really working all the way out to the edge on these things. If you do, you run into some problems with matting it. Your mat is going to take up a quarter of an inch. And let's get the yellow in. Now this ought to do something really nice once it's washed. Your whole composition will change if you have the painting going all the way out to the edge of the paper. Because what happens there is that you don't want elements to kiss the edge. Something that just touches the edge of a painting is called kissing. If I had the edge of the paper here, this tree would be kissing. Now if I took half an inch off for matting, it's not kissing the way I originally do it, but it is when you put the mat in. So when you're planning your composition, sometimes it helps to put crop lines. Also, if you put the water all the way out to the edge, it curls worse. Now we've got some colors going there. What's really going on here in this landscape? Well, I've just kind of done it in as brown ground, but we're really going to have something more like a grass texture, and that's going to be sort of mixed colors. But let's underpaint it with green anyway. That's the local color. We'll put some scritchy angled strokes here just to give it a little more color and distinguish it from the brown. It'll really be a mixture of green and brown when we wash this area. I'm washing each area separately now. Run some blue on the shadow side of the tree trunk, the dark blue, which will wind up mixing in. See how that's shaded? We'll give a trunk to these little trees. And you don't see the trunk on this one that you're just seeing the top of it. So, let's bring some brown in on these trunks. And we'll give it another one there. So there's like three of them over there in the distance. It's another composition principle that you want to have odd numbers of objects. I've got three main tree shapes here. We'll go over all the yellow first which will pick up some blue into it and turn into a light green. But we don't want it to get too dark in the underpainting. We can add more color later on. The dark patches, they're going to be pretty dramatic. They're going to be darker than the sky. Where I go up into the sky, you're seeing a little edge form. That's fine. Don't try to be perfect in an underpainting. 
you're going to go in and detail it later on with dry work and other layers and this first painted layer is very thin the texture of the paper is just fine for adding more pastels to it so here we go into the shadows on the tree distinguish that bit of a brown branch from this unfortunately I've had to use the same shade of dark blue for the distant mountains as the shadows on the tree but maybe we can do something about that later on when we're adding more layers at least we've got the colors in now get in on the shadows of the smaller trees in the distance get everything washed and wash in this little bush or tree or whatever this is in the foreground and once again we'll let stuff dry always work on different areas that are not adjacent if you don't want the colors to mix let the nearby color dry out completely before adding any more I'm gonna get the mountains in because even if it is adjacent it's touching things that are the same color notice how much darker the distant mountains are than the sky this is important Carlson's landscape guide classic classic book on landscape painting explains that the very lightest element in both landscapes is going to be the sky the next lightest is going to be any flat surface like this ground down here it should be a little bit a little bit darker than the sky actually but it's not because we're still working with textures and we can lighten the sky up a bit too once we get to putting more layers on there's always putting layers of white I didn't get enough brown here on it so let's try and mix this to a nice light brown the darkest thing in the composition is going to be anything vertical like the size of the side of a house or the vertical trees or in this case the distant mountains which are usually a little lighter than the foliage so we will be darkening the foliage quite a bit more when we get to doing the final version again be sloppy just get it in there some way any old way get it wet you're getting areas of color and value you're not trying to paint this as if it was going to be a watercolor painting you could and if you did that and you're very careful then what you have is a nice watercolor painting done with water soluble oil pastels but there's a reason the title of the video says under painting so now that we've got everything else painted in here we're going to let it dry again segue to the next segment maybe pet the cat some more <laughs> 